Hi, everybody. Well, it's time for everyone to start thinking about filling out their year-end forms for 4-H. And it's really exciting for me because I get to read about all the great things that you've done all year in your 4-H program. So today I want to talk to you about the Y620, the 4-H project record. Okay, so why do you even want to fill these out to begin with? Well, the first and most obvious reason is because it qualifies you for county awards. The second reason is because you might want to look back someday, like I did today, and see all of the great things that you did in 4-H. These are actually my report forms from back in the day when I was in 4-H, and it has all of the stuff that I did in the years I did them, what I wanted to learn about, and as I look back at that, I can really remember everything so clearly. And so I want you guys to have the same opportunity to look back on your 4-H experience so that you can remember all the great things that you've gotten to do. So we're going to go through this step by step. The first thing on report forms of any kind is that you want to make sure that you are doing them very neatly. Okay, neatness counts. If you're handwriting in this form, you want to make sure that you use your very best penmanship. Now, if you can type in the form, that's fine too. It might make them neater and look more professional, but handwriting is perfectly fine. Just use your best penmanship. And you want to do what you can to fill up all of these boxes. And you might be thinking, well, I've only been in 4-H for a year or two. I can't do that. Well, there are some things that you can put in here, and I bet by the time we get done, you can fill up most, if not all, of these boxes. So after you do this top part, which is all your contact information in your club, you're going to get into this goal setting section. Now, these first goals are specific to your project. So if you had an animal project, for example, one of your goals might have been that you wanted to learn how to take care of your animals better. If you didn't set goals for your project at the beginning of the year with your project leader, you might want to take a little bit of time and reflect back on what it was that you wanted to learn in your project this year. Why did you take this project? What was it that you wanted to learn about? And put those things here. Down here is where you put some overall 4-H goals. Maybe you wanted to become a better public speaker. Maybe you wanted to get an office in 4-H or give your demonstration at State Fair. So if those were your goals, you can put those and then if you've completed those, the date you accomplish them here. Down here is where you put your learning and leadership experiences. Things like workshops, field days, camps, um, and you can designate whether those are local or club, county, regional, or state. And so you want to talk about what it was that you did and what you learned. Keep in mind that sometimes what you learned is not specific to your project. It's things like responsibility, problem solving, teamwork, communication. Like if you went to camp and you were a part of a group, um, you know, well, I have to show up for KP, so that's responsibility, things like that. On the back, that's where you talk about knowledge and skills in your project area. What did you learn? What kinds of knowledge and skills did you gain? And then how are you gonna use those? So this part is where you talk about what you learned. Maybe it was how to feed your animals better, or maybe it was responsibility. How are you going to use that knowledge and skills? Well, by learning to feed your animals better, you can do a better job of raising your animals next year. And by learning responsibility, you can use that at school, you can use it at home, on the job, you can apply that in all different areas of your life. And so you can put that over here in this part. Here you put some information about your project and the animal projects are pretty easy to, to plug in here. If you don't have an animal project, you might have something like, let's say you did a painting in arts and crafts. So you're going to put cat painting, 16 by 20 oil. I spent 20 hours doing it and I learned that it takes a lot of time to, to do really well at painting. And then finally, the financial summary. Again, if you have an animal, you wanna make sure you put feed, supplies, equipment, your premiums when you showed them at the fair, if you made the premium sale, if you sold animals, even if it wasn't a show animal, if it was part of your project, it can go here. Non-livestock projects still have a cost. So let's go back to our painting example. You might've had to buy your canvas, your oil paints, 
your brushes, some cleaning supplies. And so you would put those here and then maybe you sold some other work in order to help pay for that. And so you would put that in there as income. And down here, you want to total your income, your expenses, and then calculate whether or not you made or lost money in your project. It's not important that you made money. It's just important that you know that there's an investment in your project and how much that investment was. And then here you want to make sure you get all the proper signatures before you turn this in. So that's it. It's just one page front and back. It's really simple. And I hope that you will all take the time to sit down and reflect on your project for the year and fill one of these out because I think that you'll be really glad that you did.